Kip, I want to thank everyone for family and friends for joining them to get together today on a special occasion. We're gathered here in the presence of God to unite together Kip and Sarah in Christian marriage. I'm very excited that Kip and Sarah have shared their testimony with me and have chosen to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives and his blessing over this marriage. Jesus taught that a union is between one man and one woman and the two will become one. In fact, it was God in the beginning who said in Genesis 2.24, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Kip and Sarah, do you acknowledge the Lordship of Christ and believe it is God's will for you to be married? Who gives Sarah to be married to Kip? Her mother and I. I sort of told them I was just going to uh, start right into a scripture today, but uh, I wanted to tell them a the little bit of things that I noticed. I heard a dad last night talking about when he knew Kip was the right man and when it was going to be. And so they were coming to Bible study at the cabin for a while before they were officially boyfriend and girlfriend. So I asked Kip one day, I said, uh, you and Sarah dating or anything? He said, no, we're not, we're not dating. We're just good friends. And I said, yeah, to myself. <laughs> so it wasn't very long after that that he came to me and said, we're official now. <laughs> I said, well, I'm, I'm glad you let me know. So I sat down with him, and when we was going through counseling, I was talking to him, and I said, uh, there's a lot of things that you hadn't thought about that's going, you need to talk about before we get started. And, and I said, the first one is my, the main thing. And I remember looking at me and I said, what is it? I said, well, Kip's wanting to hang a deer head in, that, in the house. And she said, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> I said, she's the right one for you then. So I knew she was the right one then. But she can be a little bit uh, spicy herself. <laughs> All right. Sc scripture states in Romans 5, 8, that God loved us while we were sinners, unconditionally. Kip and Sarah have responded to this offer by accepting God's salvation through his son, made possible by his sacrifice on the cross. The goal of the Bible is to lead a man to be more like Jesus. Jesus loved the church so much that he died for her. Kip should do no less for his wife, Sarah. God's word reveals that love is not a feeling. John 15, 13 states that greater love has no man than this, that he lay his life down for his friend. So you see, love is not an emotion or a feeling, but an act of the will, a choice. This is what better or worse means, not just in good times, but even in the bad times. It's a love based on not circumstances. Kim Sarah, I want to charge you from 1 Corinthians 13, in this passage, we see what God says love does. It's an action, an act. Love is patient. Will you commit to being patient with one another? Love is kind. Will you commit to being kind with one another? Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Will you commit to serving one another in humility? And this is the one I think gets most of us. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Will you commit to forgiving one another? Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. For there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfection disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. 
When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection is in the mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know fully, even as I'm fully known. And these three remain, hope, faith, and love. Faith in Jesus, hope in what he did, and love that comes from a relationship with God through Jesus. The greatest of these is love, because God is love. Kevin, sir, I charge both of you, having prayerfully considered the holy covenant you are about to make to one another, that if this covenant is honored, if the words you are about to say to one another before God and these witnesses are true, and honoring your commitment to one another, you will also honor God by pursuing him and his will for your lives. He will bless your marriage and will grant you joy, peace, and fulfillment in it. Let us pray. Lord, the word uh, if's a big if. And Lord, it's been uh, proclaimed all through, the, through your Bible, 1,522 times approximately. And there's not one if in the Bible for you. Every if's for us. Because Lord, there's no if in you. You all, always fulfill. You always succeed. Lord, you always will. And I pray today, Lord, that as we go through this sermon, this Lord, just thinking about how pleasing it is you to see two come together and be an example for the world to see what you look like through one. Lord, I pray you'll give them strength every day. Help them in this journey, Lord. Help us to be the people we need to be to them. And we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me get this page turned. I'm going to get to the next one. Our profession of vows. Repeat after me, Kip. I Kip. I Kip. And able to offer myself. And able to offer myself. Completely to you, sir. Completely to you, sir. Only because of my faith in Jesus Christ. Only because of my faith in Jesus Christ. Because he has given me his Holy Spirit. Because he has given me his Holy Spirit. I can truly say. I can truly say. I can love you forever. I can love you forever. I promise to love you with all my heart. So, so mine, mine and, strength. and strength. To be true to you and faithful. To do, be true to you and faithful. Patient and kind. Patient and kind. Unselfish selfish in this love. Unselfish in this love. I promise to stand beside you always. I promise to stand beside you always. In times of joy. In times of joy. In times of trials. In times of trials. And in times of sorrow. In times of sorrow. I dedicate our marriage. I dedicate our marriage. And our home. And our home. To the Lordship of Jesus Christ. To the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I pledge myself. I pledge myself. And all that I am in love. And all that I am in love. All right, Sarah, repeat after me. I, Sarah. I, Sarah. Am able to offer myself. Am able to offer myself. Completely to you, Kip. Completely to you, Kip. Only because of my faith in Jesus Christ. Because he has given, because he has given me his Holy Spirit. I can truly say, I can, truly say I, can I can love you forever. I promise to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. To be true and faithful, patient and kind, unselfish in this love, promise to stand beside you always. In times of joy, in times of trials, times of sorrow. I dedicate our marriage and our home to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I pledge myself and all that I am in love. I want to pat you on the back. <laughs> uh, the wedding ring is an outward sign of the vows you have just spoken. It signifies that you have been joined together in marriage through the authority of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not a sign to you, but it lets the world know that you belong to one another. As the ring is an unbroken circle, use it to remind yourself of your unbroken bond to one another and to God. All right, here, we've got to do it one more time. I need to get the ring. 
In just a second, yeah. Left hand. Yeah. Huh? Rock and roll. Yeah. Do I? Just hold it right there on it. Okay, keep it for me. This ring I give in faith and pledge. This ring I give in faith and pledge. Of our constant love. Of our constant love. And lasting devotion. And lasting devotion. It's symbolic. It is symbolic. Of my sacred vows. Of my sacred vows. To our Lord Jesus Christ. To our Lord Jesus Christ. And to you. And to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. All right, say so repeat that to me. I give you in faith and pledge. This ring I give you in faith and pledge. About constant, constant love. And lasting devotion. And lasting devotion. It is symbolic of my sacred vows. It is symbolic of my sacred vows. To our Lord Jesus Christ. To our Lord Jesus Christ. And to you. And to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And the Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. We will now take communion. They will as they play a song. see from you the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had yet given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this and remember something. You can break that in half. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying this is the cup of the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it and remember something. For whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When you take communion, always remember that if you have anything in your life that's not what it needs to be, don't take communion until you go to the altar and get it right with God, okay? Back up. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the uh, opportunity we just had to take communion together, Lord. Remember the sacrifice you made and, Lord, the blood you shed. And, Lord, today, this is an important day in their life, Lord. It's, it's right behind the day they gave their life to you. 
But Lord, I pray for 50 years from now. I pray to be just as strong then as it is today, if not stronger. I pray the ones that have been here today can watch their lives as they grow and, Lord, see you in every step they take. I pray, Lord, that we will not miss an opportunity to encourage them, to help them in their walk. Lord, to be a friend. But Lord, many things, just stand in the truth with them. Because they think of enough of us to come here today to be with them. Lord, give us the courage and strength to speak truth to them every time we get a chance. We just want to let you know we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. I will cry and charge you both. As you stand in the presence of God, your family, and these assembled witnesses to keep these vows, to pursue a marriage that brings glory to God and joy to your family and friends, believing that is your deepest intention, it is my privilege as a minister of the gospel, and by the authority invested in me, by the laws of this state, to pronounce from this day forward that you are a husband and wife. Kip, you may kiss your bride. Wait, wait right there, man. Wait, 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 wait. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to introduce to you Mr. and Miss Sarah Kip and Sarah Evans. <laughs>